opportunity as a whole is surreal. I think when we flew, when we drove into Arlington yesterday, it was just a crazy moment being able to see the Cowboys stadium and then the Ranger stadium where we're playing tomorrow. It's just a cool feeling as a whole. I think as a team, we were kind of saying that for an MLB player, this is probably the nicest stadium they've played in. For a college player, this is unbelievable. So just a great part, great to be here. So. Well, Dom, just kind of reflect a little bit more on, on what you just said. You get to play in an MLB stadium. I know you guys had a little bit of a practice and there a couple hours ago. Just what do you think it's going to be like to to pitch in a major league ballpark like that? Yeah, it's going to feel pretty cool as a whole, I think. But at the end of the day, it's just another game for all of us. I think we got to treat it as another game. But obviously, to take it in as a fan, it's a very cool moment to be part of that stadium, knowing that there was a World Series there last year and that the but that's, that's got to be in the back of our mind. So. When did you get word that you'd get the Tuesday start? And what's your reaction to that? Uh, I was told that after my outing on, uh, I think it was Friday when we had that doubleheader. And uh, I was very excited. You know, it's an honor to be given the ball for game one. And it's just my turn to get the job done. That's how we view it. You are going up against the Cincinnati Bearcats. You were, the, of course, the start, starting pitcher for the one victory you were able to get over the Bearcats when you faced them during the regular season. What do you take from that matchup against the Bearcats going into this one now with postseason stakes on the line? Yeah, I think we just take it as they were a very good team. They took two out of three at our place, and that's got to motivate us a little bit to make sure that uh, we got to beat them on a neutral site. And I think it motivates us a whole lot to come out hungry and get a win tomorrow. What from that series did you see that you need to improve on during this big game? Um, I think in general, we just got to be better in tighter situations. And I think throughout the season, we've had a whole lot of playoff like atmosphere games that now it's just the time to turn it on and take take our game to the next step. How would you describe your last outing on Friday? Um, I thought it was good. I thought it was all right. I thought it, it was what it needed to be to get ready for this outing today or tomorrow. How do the guys feel about playing Cincinnati? This is a team that obviously a lot of these players are familiar with. You played them in previous yeah. years. It was just a couple of weeks ago. They went two out of three uh, at home against you guys. How do you feel about playing Cincinnati again? Yeah, I think regardless of who we played, because up until we were supposed to play West Virginia and that it didn't matter who we played, we're just re excited, ready to play and hungry. So I think it, it doesn't really matter who we're playing. We're just at the end of the day playing against ourselves. How is the team's momentum coming into this tournament after taking two of three against Baylor? Uh, I think it's been pretty well. I think being able to go on the road and take two out of three from a very good team, and even though the record didn't reflect it, reflect it, that we're just hungry and ready to play another game. So I think we know what's at stake. Cincinnati knows what's at stake. So just playoff baseball at the end of the day. This team beat uh, preseason projections. Uh, why do you think this tournament is wide open for UCF? Um, I think because when you look at the field and who we've beaten, I think that at the end of the day, we play our style of baseball that we're able to beat any team. And I think that goes for anyone else that when they're playing their style of baseball, they can be anyone in this country. So it's just it's all a toss up about who's who's hot that day and who's ready to show up. Dom, most of most of the projections, all, basically all of them have you guys in the field of 64 currently. Yeah. But how much of a sense of urgency is there in, in Texas to to get a win or two to make sure that solidified come selection Monday? Yeah, we know it's at stake at the end of the day. And I think other teams who aren't in the field know it's at stake in that they're trying to beat us now because we're in that field. So we're at the end of the day hungry that we're not we're trying to make sure that we're in it on um, selection show Monday. Last time we spoke, um, spoke with some of the team. Do you guys have real belief that you can go deep in the Big 12 tournament? What allows you guys to believe that even through some of the inconsistencies that you guys have had this season? Yeah, I think we've shown that, especially come late in the ball games, that we're able to fight back. And I think at the end of the day, pitching and defense wins ball games in the playoffs. And we've shown that we have an unbelievable pitching staff and that we can play defense with the best of them. So I think that's what allows us to think that we can make a run and honestly win this thing. Dom, just kind of reflecting on that, you know, all Big 12 second team honor. What's yeah. what's kind of different about this season for you? Obviously, you've taken a big step up from your first year at yeah. UCF a year ago. I know you had your freshman year at, at Stetson. What, what changed? What, what really improved for you this year to have such a great year? Um, I think just given a pitching coach that I was able to trust in, I think Drew does a great job with me and the whole pitching staff as a whole. And lucky enough, I was able to get the award, but I think there's plenty of other guys in the staff that should have been deserving of it too. So I think I'm lucky enough to get the award, but we as a whole staff had a great year. So, Well, um, there were five other guys that were named all Big 12 yeah. honorable mention. Just what do you have to say about their performance, like Castellano, Kramer? Just Yeah, I think they've been terrific all year. And I think honorable mention was still like – I think they deserve first and second team, but I think as a whole, we had a, even for, besides the five honorable mentions, we should have had more guys on that list. So I think it's just 
feeds us a little extra motivation to obviously attack the Big 12 tournament. Describe what it's like to play in the Big 12 now you've gone through the whole season. I mean, you're always going to be a part of that first UCF team to compete in the Big 12. Describe what it's been like. Oh, it's been unreal. I think looking back, you know, we always envisioned as a kid growing up to be playing against schools like Texas, Oklahoma. And now that we've been given the ability to play them, it's kind of a cool moment. But at the end of the day, it's we got to treat it as a normal team another day. And that if we if we sit there and start staring and, you know, reminiscing on the good old days that we're not going to do what we want to do as a team. Kind of referencing to before you guys beat your preseason predictions. You guys have played to a higher level than a lot expected. Are you still using that as a chip going into this uh, tournament? Yeah, hundred percent. I think at the end of the day, we're always given doubters, haters in our lives that, you know, to be obviously from a power six going into a power five conference that, you know, it just motivates us to work a little bit harder and, you know, be a little hungrier when it comes to moments like this. You know, you uh, mentioned chip there, uh, there Cincinnati as of right now is currently listed as one of the first four out according to certain pro projections. Yeah. And of course you're in the field as well. When you think about the postseason implications that go into a game like this, how do you kind of get yourselves into a mindset to go out there and just like, treat it like any other game yeah I think uh, if we think the moment's a little bigger than it has to be I think that's when we don't play our best and that at the end of the day we got to treat it as if we're playing you know little league baseball in the backyard baseball wiffle ball and just let our natural habits take over and we've worked hard enough to up to this point that there's no reason to stress that stress the game tomorrow and what it make it be bigger than it has to be take us back through seeing the stadium uh, for the first time during a walkthrough what was it like to be inside the venue and know that you'll be pitching there on tuesday oh it was definitely insane i think last year in the clearwater conference tournament gave us a little taste of being in at least a, a minor league ballpark stadium and this is just topped it by a ton so it's a very cool feeling as a you know collegiate baseball player Don, what's it like when you're on the road for such a long period of time? You guys obviously went to Baylor early and, you know, staying in Texas for the tournament. Uh, how do you guys kind of pass the time when you're on the road for so long? Yeah, I think a lot of us brought, brought uh, video games on the road to pass time. And I think it great, gives us a great opportunity to you know, hang out as teammates and bond a little bit more. So and, and we also had a nice little bus ride over from Waco, Texas. So I think at the end of the day, it gives us a little more time to hang out with each other and, you know, feel like more of like a brotherhood than just like teammates. Anybody else got anything? Hey, we'll grab we'll grab Coach Wallace. Thank you guys. Good luck, Dom. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Coach. Uh, I guess first of all, can you just kind of reflect on that Baylor series? I, I know you guys probably felt like you definitely needed to win it, which, which you did. I know you were hoping to sweep. Just looking back on that weekend, did you accomplish what you wanted to? I mean, obviously you're trying to win every game you play, but you're going into that series knowing you have to feel like you have to win the series. Um, it puts a little added pressure, but we're at the end of the year, so all the games are like that. Um, getting there, we probably could have just played three single games. Uh, made a decision early in the day that the rain was going to be pretty bad, but we sat in a hotel about 8 o'clock and figured we could have been on the field. But uh, to play that doubleheader, that might have been the hottest doubleheader I've ever experienced in my life. I think the sun was in our face for seven hours in that dugout. Played pretty good the first game, made some mental mistakes the second game. But we had to make some decisions on how long we were either going to go with Vespi short or, or Stagliano short and just kind of let it present itself. Vespi was rolling. We had to win that first one. He won it. We're in a close one with a with the loaded bullpen and kind of kept Stag short so we could start him tomorrow and then found a way to win somehow Sunday. So. What went into your decision to, to start Dom and how have you uh, approached getting your pitching staff lined up for uh, a tournament run? Yeah, we kept him. Like he was going to be short anyway, just with the, the shorter week. He was, the, he was short a day on, on Friday. So we kept him the 50 pitches so we could start him on Tuesday. Um, that was the plan. And then push Vespi because he threw closer to 85, push him to the next day. Cause you know, you have those two games. We had to, figure out a way to set that up. And then Wiley pitched well enough. Dom only was at 50 pitches. So everybody should be available except for Vespi tomorrow. Reg, most of the, most, if not all the projections currently have you guys in the NCAA field um, as of today, but how much 
you know, the sense of urgency is there in Arlington to at least get one or possibly two to, to solidify that? Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't really looked at that stuff, just knowing in years past where we sit and what we do. We got to get something done here. Um, our goal is to win as many games as we possibly can here and stay here as long as possible. But you're at this point, you're just trying to win so you can take take some uh, decision making out of the process. But the more you win, the easier it is to put you in. And looking at you, you know, a lot of the times the, the committees look at your last 10 games or so. You guys are one of the, the hotter teams in the conference towards the end of the year. Just how much momentum do you guys feel like you have going into this conference tournament as this postseason now is here? Yeah, I think we we've shown that we can we can play well and, and play well on the road and play well in the state of Texas. And I mean, we went from being at Houston to coming home to play in Texas and going back on the road here to Waco and then driving over here. Uh, we spent a lot of time in Texas or playing Texas the last month. And uh, we're just looking to put our best foot forward here in the tournament. You ended up drawing the Cincinnati who took two or three from you in Orlando. What did you learn from that series that you're hoping the team can apply when they face the Bearcats tomorrow? No, I think we're two evenly matched teams. Uh, that's a well-coached, talented group. And when we play the way we need to play, we have a shot to beat them. And if we don't, they're going to they're gonna hand it to us just like they did in, in Orlando. Like the, All those games could have went either way. For us, they could have swept us. We could have swept them. They won the series. We could have won the series. There's little moments in the game when you're playing a well-coached, talented team like Cincinnati that you got to take care of or, or else. Um, and I'm hoping to do that. Cincinnati, Projection. they announced they're going to pitch Nathan Taylor. I think, believe he was a Saturday pitcher against you guys. He pitched well into the seventh inning, only gave up, I think, two earned runs in that game. What do you remember about his outing and, and how he fared against your batters? Yeah, explosive fastball. I mean, he used the fastball up and out of the zone against us. The slider was working that night. Uh, it's it's basically the same matchup. I think it's Dom versus, versus Taylor again. Um, and we're going to have to figure out a way to, to kind of get to him a little earlier, hopefully, than we did last time. There's there's things in there when you're facing a good young arm like that that you have to that you have to hone in on, or he's gonna he's gonna be uh, tough to deal with for the whole night. We're looking for a little bit better at bats against. Him. Projections show that Cincinnati list is one of the last four four out. Considering the question that you've talked about before about you know UCF's projections into the tournament as well, with postseason stakes on the line like this, how do you kind of go into a matchup like this and kind of be able to treat it like any other game? Yeah, I think that's all we have to do, right? Like that's we got one of our better starting pitchers on the mound. The bullpen's ready to roll. It to me, it's like the first game of a series. You're going to do everything you can to try to try to win this game and and put your best foot forward and try not to get locked in on those projections because I've never seen them actually be right uh, on both sides of it. So. <laughs> You've talked about your uh, uh, margins throughout these uh, Big 12 series. Uh, your your defense let you down a little bit over the weekend. How important is it for everybody to be focused and uh, sharp for a tournament of this run? Yeah, and I mean, we have to play defense to the level of our capabilities. Uh, and we have to be able to create some things on offense like you can – just left that place. It's enormous. The infield's fast. It's turf to dirt. It's as big as park as you could ever imagine. I mean, I coach a hundred and something games at Charles Schwab field where we play the world series. And everybody talks about how big that field is. This one's one's bigger. Um, so we got to figure out ways to play defense and outs will be at a premium. In respect to the field and the stadium you're going to play in, how did the guys react when you had batting practice in there a couple hours ago? What was your reaction when they walk in there and realize they're going to play in probably one of the nicest MLB ballparks? Yeah, it, it's exactly what you thought it would be, Brandon. Like the, the excitement and the big eyes, like it's it's pretty neat. Like if you can't walk through the tunnel of that place out to the field and your heart doesn't start bumping a little faster than usual, then you're probably not alive. Like that's these kids deserve this opportunity and hopefully they're going to take advantage of it. So How much of it in the past few weeks? A lot of them have been saying, not only saying, but truly believe that they can make a deep run in this Big 12 tournament. How are you reacting to sort of that confidence and and trying to coach them through that? Yeah, I'm I'm glad they feel that way. They should feel that way. Um, of course, like it's still the same thing. Like, you got to play the first game. Like this thing has to be one game at a time. Play your best game, and then we'll. De if that's not good enough, then we'll come back in here, regroup, and find another way to do it. But just locking in on playing UCF baseball in game one against doesn't matter who doesn't matter where just play our style of baseball give yourself the best chance to win and, and see if we can make the plays at the right time how much of an adjustment is it to play at a major league baseball ballpark uh, i mean you mentioned it, that every player's dream is to play at a major league ballpark and this is one of the best that's hosted the world series and i'm curious 
does this also is a nice pitch to use from a recruiting standpoint where your recruits are watching you and know that every year that you're in the Big 12 tournament, you're going to play at a big league park? Yeah, that kind of stadium, one. Two, it's climate controlled. Like, so we know for the most part what time games will start. We don't have to worry about the lightning. Um, it's a thousand degrees outside right now and nobody's worried about it. Nobody's checking weather reports. Like you can't get any better than that for a conference tournament. I've, I've sat in conference tournaments where you play games at two in the morning. Like that's, that's, we talk about student athlete experience. That's probably not one of them that they would want, uh, but to play in this place and this type of environment gets the type of teams that we get to play on a, on a weekly basis in this league. Like this is elite college baseball at an elite venue. They couldn't get better than this. And I think the adjusting to the stadium Obviously, the, the dirt to turf to dirt is different than anything we played on and then anybody anybody else has played on in, in college baseball. What anytime, do you think of the ball? Anytime you go to a big league park, I think the biggest issue is the fly ball and judging it through the through the second and third deck, which none of these guys have, have done. Usually you're trying to deal with one set and it gets above something and you can find it. I mean, there's a lot of seats in here. I seriously doubt most of them are going to be filled, especially in the second deck. So just – getting used to the surroundings, dealing with the second deck, finding the fly balls, dealing with a roof that looks like it's a thousand feet up in the air. Uh, all things we try to get used to today. What do you think of the format of this tournament, the double elimination, then it speeds up there towards the end? Yeah. Um, I, I think that's probably right. Uh, you got some those teams that got the first and second seed deserve the break at the beginning. We got to play our way through. And then once you get to the end, like, talking about student athlete experience, right? And hopefully those teams at the end are playing next weekend. There's no reason to play those four games on on the, on the last two days of the year when you're trying to get ready, hopefully for the next Friday or could be Thursday. Coach Don Vistagalani was named a Big 12 All-Second Team today or, or Second Team All-Big 12. What, what was he like this season? What, what did he do to really kind of step up his game? We were kind of going over who was returning and where we thought the biggest strides could be made. Uh, and we sat down and talked about the use of the changeup, expanding the the breaking ball repertoire, getting them a little more physical, putting them in the right situations. And to see it, to talk about that in July and then see a kid from August to now put it to put it out there on the field on display and get rewarded for it. Like that's one for him, great. Two for our Coach Thomas and the pitching development part of it, like there's a roadmap to it if guys will buy in. And that's great for him, great for the program, great for the development of what we're trying to do with our pitchers. And he honestly, we talked about it. I think he's just now starting to scratch the surface how good he really can be. Coach, you also had five players get named all Big 12 honorable mention, players like Castellano, Kramer, Prevest. What is it about those guys that the performance this season that earned them this recognition from the conference? And those have been consistent performers for us since the beginning. Like Kyle Kramer, I know he's taking the ball 30 times whenever we ask. Castellano started, closed, thrown in the middle, thrown at the beginning, thrown thrown at the end. Like he's done everything we ask. Matt's been great, been better than advertised in the outfield. And we always knew he could hit, but he's turned himself into a plus defender in left field. Danny Neri coming in in January, kind of helping our pitchers and, and doing the things that he did. Um, to be a, to get recognized like that because they played well in the league. Like that's, you can talk about the whole year, but those guys got recognized because they were contributors in the league, in league games, when it mattered the most, and they got rewarded for it. What's the Andrew Sundin's status going into this tournament? Yeah, we're just trying to pick the right spots to use him. Obviously, like he was still working through some stuff and we try to give him a break. And then Matt Cedarberg's having another Matt Cedarberg May. Uh, he's been hot as fire and, you got to kind of, it's, there's one spot for one guy to go out there and just hit. And right now seeds that guy. And we're trying to get Sonny back locked in and he'll be used at some point during this tournament off the bench or, or at DH. And um, he looked really good today. He looked more like himself today. So hopefully we'll get a chance to use him here soon. As referenced before, obviously a lot of pitchers were recognized in the, uh, for the Big 12. Do you think that your pitchers uh, starting and bullpen, their versatility can, can be one of your biggest edges in this tournament? Yeah, I think so, because I, I don't I, we have some unselfish guys that don't really care when they get the ball. They just want to help the team and and find a way to win games. And that's huge down the stretch because that, there's some of these games that are going to be messy and you got to figure out who you're going to use, when you're going to use them. And all of our guys have been used in different situations. I think they're prepared for that uh, and, and they're and they're for it. And we got a bunch of guys that they don't really care. They just want the ball in the biggest moments and, and want a chance to help us win.
Coach, I know the focus is obviously on Tuesday in game one, but for uh, day two, would Vespi be able to pitch on shorter rest, or is that just kind of like, like a TBD decision to see what happens tomorrow and then decide? Yeah, that would be TBD. I, I think he can. We'll just kind of see what the matchup is and how he feels. Um, but if I, I if I had to guess, if I ask him, he's going to tell me he feels fine. So we'll just kind of see where that is. We do some testing here. Well, Kaylee Shores, our, our trainer, and, and Coach Thomas, they do some testing just to see where the strength levels are and if it's – if it's normal so that there's not a lot of lying when it comes to that part, like the, the arm tells you what it needs to tell you. Um, so, but he's, he's thrown on shorter rest before he's very diligent in his, in his prep work post and, and all that stuff and, and getting himself ready to play. And I mean, he's a, he's a senior that, that wants another shot to pitch. So I would assume he would be okay. Coach, what is the difference between the team you saw in the season opener versus the team you see right now going into their first big 12 tournament? Well, I think it's it's been battle tested, right? Like we were just learning some of the stuff we wanted to do, and they were just trying to figure out where they fit in the whole thing. I think they understand where the what they need to do, where they fit in the whole encompassing part of the the team and how we win. Um, and they've been through some battles. We've been to some tough places with some tough travel, and won some really really tough games, lost some tough games, got our tails whipped at time, and had to respond. There's really not much they haven't already seen. So to me, they're battle tested and and ready to make a run. You just mentioned tough travel. What's it like being on the road as long now as you have been? Yeah, it's it's tough, right? They, they've been gone for a while. Um, you know, second courtyard in as many weeks, courtyard Marriott. Um, but just dealing with that, like we got to lift in somebody else's weight room. You're sleeping in hotel beds. Some of our guys have already started summer school. So our guys were on the computer doing school last night and but at the same point, like they just wanted the chance to be in this tournament, and make a run. I think they're excited to play. And I mean, they're 18 to 22 year olds. It's not like me and you, Dre, to trying to deal with these bets. They'll be fine. You'd like to be there long enough to get your mail forwarded to Texas, right? 100. percent I don't. If we could stay on the road for another three weeks, I'd be happy. <laughs> Coach, what's the key to having a successful tournament? What's going to be the key? One or two things that you have to do to have a successful run. Well, I mean. You don't have to win the first. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, win the first. You don't have to win the first game, but it sure as heck helps. It's just being able to play the type of baseball we need to play. Like, can we can we pitch and defend at a high level? If we do that, we got a shot. If we can execute on offense, offense and be timely on offense, we're gonna have a shot. And if all those things happen at once, like we can play with anybody in the country. You guys have seen it. We can play with anybody when we when we do those things and, and play to the level of our capabilities. This league is projected by many to have seven to eight bids, depending on how things go in the week. You've coached in some of the best leagues, including the ACC. Describe the Big 12 uh, and why it's so deep and talented. Well, I think just you got really good baseball programs and programs that have really good baseball resources. Uh, recruiting, like we went to Baylor. Baylor, you know, facilities, and, and that's a good team. Like that was a really good team that we played that's not even in our tournament. So – those guys that have a – we're playing somebody like that every single weekend. Uh, the pitching from top to bottom, not only the starting pitcher, but the relievers, the physicality of the lineups. There's some real – like, just go through the draft boards. Like, you're going through teams where there's first-round picks every weekend. Um, if not first-round pick, first first two-day picks on every team. Um, and that's something that you got to prepare for. It's, to me, it feels no different than the ACC – as far as the quality of team from top to bottom, uh, the travel is obviously a little more spread out in certain parts. But I mean, I coached in the ACC when we were in South Bend, so there's really not much. Might as well have been in Canada. So this is couldn't be as bad as that. How uh, wide open do you consider this tournament? tournament? Say that one more time. Sorry, James, jump. How in wide open. open do you consider this tournament? Anybody well, think, can win it. Look, yeah, I think so. Just look at the the league. Like how I mean, you went into the last day of the league trying to figure out six spots like there's a lot of us that that are bunched up and with talented teams well coached teams that on any given day can beat anybody and these things are crazy anyway whether whether it's balanced or not these conference tournaments get get crazy and nuts and things happen and you got kids some kids fighting to play the last game of their career so uh, crazy stuff can happen you guys good Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thank it, you, guys. Appreciate Thanks, Coach. It. Good luck. Good luck, Coach. Thank Thanks. you, guys. Good luck.